What's going on everybody, Dialerworks TV back with another video and I just wanted to give my post game analysis and uh, talk about last night's loss to the Golden State Warriors. I didn't really get to catch the first half of the game because, you know, my nephew birthday just passed and we were at my sister's house celebrating and uh, my mom's birthday is today. So I'm gonna make this video really quick. Um, so the Lakers are still ninth in the West even though, you know, the Lakers are much worse than our record indicates. You know, the Lakers should be last place in the in the West. A lot of the teams that they were able to defeat earlier in the season, they didn't win by a wide margin. Uh, it really wasn't competitive. It was a lot of games that could have went either way. And, you know, a lot of games, the, the refs bailed them out. Um, you know, it went down to the wire. You know, I think of games like the Mavericks game where, you know, Austin Reeves hit that um, buzzer beater. Was it a buzzer? It was a buzzer beater, but, or it was a, a you know, last second shot, a couple of seconds left on the clock. So I guess you call it a buzzer beater or whatever. Uh, but he, you know, was able to get the win in a very close game. So when we play a lot of the elite teams, we see how superior and how great these teams are. And you see the gap. You see how much, of you know, there is a difference, which, you know, is a segue into the Lakers and the Warriors. You see the difference in skill set and chemistry. And I just want, want for people to see the difference between why it's very important to build in the draft opposed to just, taking pieces of, and, and trying to put them together and build a team and try to form a team. The Warriors had probably like a three-year drop-off span where it was 2019 where they were in the finals versus the Toronto Raptors and Klay Thompson went down with an injury, a excruciating injury, right? Devastating. So he was out from 2019, so that's 2020, 2021, 2022. So realistically, they had three down years to where they were able to rebuild through the draft, allow Klay Thompson to get healthy and, you know, build his strength back to come back at, you know, at least 85%. 85% Klay Thompson is all you can ask for to be able to compete in the Western Conference. Um, but this is why it's important to rebuild and develop talent through the draft the organic way. This is how Greg Popovich was able to win multiple titles, you know, from the time Tim Duncan came into the league until Tim Duncan retired. Even at 37, Tim Duncan was able to, you know, get a, a, a finals ring, get a championship over a Miami Heat super team. And that's why it's important of building through the draft, important of having experienced players and, you know, veteran leadership, players who know their role. That's why it's very important. And this is what the Lakers lack. We don't have role play players that we have role players, but we don't have players that know their role. We may have role players, but they don't know their role. Uh, I think the guy's name is Kamiga. Kamiga brings that energy, his dunks excitement, you know, rebounding, dunking in transition, and he's a great role player that they have. Jordan Poole can come in, give you shots. You know, when you need some shots, Andrew Wiggins, great two, good two-way player. These guys take pressure off of your older guys who are Steph Curry. This is the core, your foundation who your team is built around. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. That's the foundation. Andre Iguodala is there, veteran leadership, somebody who's been there, you know, as the team was building, as they were developing and coming up. This is what the Lakers lack. The coach isn't allowed to do his job. Steve Kerr has been through different eras and have so much knowledge, so much basketball knowledge. Very high basketball IQ. He's came under the tutelage of Phil Jackson, 
was playing for Phil Jackson. Then he played for Greg Popovich, you know? So he has an understanding of the game at a very high level. So he's able to do his job and they trust and they believe and they follow Steve, Steve Kerr, you know? And Draymond Green is a vocal leader. He's a, a def, uh, he's the enforcer, great defender, can guard all five positions, you know, could force the team. They changed the league. They could force the team to go small. And, you know, they take your big man out the, out the paint. So it's more than just LeBron James. Now, LeBron James can score. This is what I want fans to understand. You can go out there at 37 and score all the points, 35, 25, break Kareem record, whoever. But at the end of the day, if this is not helping your team win, then all that should not matter. Nobody cares about that. It's about winning. I often hear people say, well, you never seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and all these players be this, you know, put up these impressive numbers in their in their latter stage of their careers. You never seen players be able to extend their prime like LeBron James and put up 37 point, you know, be 37 years old and put up these, you know, impressive big numbers, right? But they wouldn't have to. Kobe Bryant, Jordan, that is, or whoever, you know, whatever player you, you can think of, any past legend. They wouldn't have to if they had the talent that LeBron James had. Why would they go out there? They would be smart enough as leaders to say, I'm I'm going out here and, and putting up 30 and 45 points, which is not smart. Why don't I just allow Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, and my team to do the work for me I'm going to work smarter, not harder. Why am I going to put on all these minutes, these miles? I'm going to listen to my coach. My coach is telling me that Anthony Davis, and, and my coach shouldn't have to tell me that. It's Anthony Davis is younger than me, was widely regarded as one of the best big men in the league. Russell Westbrook, who plays like me, but is a much younger version of me. He's closer to... to his early 30s, well, he is like 33, but he's closer to the late 20s than I am. I'm closer to my 40s. But LeBron James, you can have all these points. But if they had the talent, the Anthony Davis and the Russell Westbrooks, they wouldn't be don't they wouldn't need to. They wouldn't need to put up all those points. For what? It's not they cared about winning titles, championships. That's all it came to, winning. They didn't care. They didn't just quit. A true leader says, man, my team not winning. I need to dial it back. After a while, what would happen to Kobe and Jordan? You know what would happen? They'd say they'd kill them in the media. They're selfish. Ball hogs. That's what, if, my, if Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant were playing right now, and they were 36, 37, 38 years old, putting up the type of numbers that LeBron James is putting up. The people in the media would have said, they, these guys are ball hogs. Am I right or am I wrong? They would have said, these guys are ball hogs. It's not, they're not winning these games. They're selfish. They would have killed them in the media. Mainstream media would have killed Jordan and Kobe for doing what LeBron James is doing right now, padding his stats, and the team is not getting any victories. Please, anybody, if you're a Jordan fan, you're a Michael, if you're a LeBron James, uh, not, not a LeBron James fan, if you're a Michael Jordan fan, you're a Wilt Chamberlain fan, you're a Jerry West fan, Kevin Durant, anybody, if these players, you replace those players, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Anybody, name, name anybody, Kobe, Shaq. If you replace them with LeBron James right now and they're putting up 30 points in past their primes, right, in their th late 30s, would the media not be killing them? 
crucifying them for putting up those numbers and the team is losing. Okay. At the end of the day, that's all people care about. It's not about individual stats. It's about winning. The Lakers are losing right now. They're at the bottom of the West, which is, no, that's, that's not acceptable. On no levels, we're losing. We're losing. The Lakers play a lot more competitive yesterday as I watched the highlights. I'll admit, I didn't watch. I only was able to come in and see the last few seconds of the third quarter, and I seen all of the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, nobody had nobody, no leader to will them to a victory. LeBron James missed key free throws. Even Shannon Sharp. Now, nobody's going to go out there and call Shannon Sharp a hater. Shannon Sharp went out on record and on Twitter and said LeBron James had more attempts than he made shots. Nobody's going to call Shannon Sharp a hater, at least not yet. But as Shannon Sharp is starting to become, he's starting to realize, he's starting to watch these games and realize that, man, like, a lot of this is can be the blame could be pointed to LeBron James because you can no longer point the blame at Russell Westbrook anymore. Why? Because Russell Westbrook has calmed down. And I for, and once again I would like to apologize to Shaq because when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. He told Russell Westbrook, slow down. And I said, that's how Russell Westbrook played the game. That's how that's how he got to where he got to. But I'm the one who also said I said, you know what? He's right because I said myself, I said, Russell Westbrook has to know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. He has to play at a control pace. He has that DNA and that killer instinct of a uh, Kobe and a Michael Jordan, but he has to have controlled aggression. He has to know when to light that fire and know when to attack and know when to kill. He don't have to go to every party he's invited to with fans and going to fight these fans. When a fan say something, okay, I'm going to prove to you on the court why you should never try to talk to me on the sideline ever again. That's the way Jordan did it. That's the way Kobe did it. Right? So there was nobody else to blame. Anthony Davis play like trash. He's trying to just, he's become a spot-up shooter. It's a lot of times in the points in the game where he could have attacked the basket, did not. Austin Reeves is a bright spot for the Lakers. That's a key piece that you want to put around, to have around, to build with your foundation of who you want to go with in the future. Now, this year seems to be like all about numbers. And the Lakers should have made a decision at the trade deadline, but they failed to do so. But I just wanted you guys to see the difference between building through the draft and just putting pieces together. And this is why the Lakers are garbage. That's why they're dysfunctional and they don't everybody is has it's too many kids, it's too many hands in the pot. I guess that's how you used to say it or too many cooks in the kitchen as as they say. I say too many hands in the pot. Somebody hands going to get burnt if there's too many hands in the pot. But it's too many cooks in the kitchen. It's too many you know chef Ramsay's in the kitchen. You know, everybody has to know their role. My phone died, but but when you're a leader, people follow you. If your body language is, you know, is showing that your head is down, you quit on your team, then they're going to follow the leader. And this is what happens with the Lakers. They don't have anybody to will them to a victory in the fourth quarter. I've seen LeBron James make multiple mistakes and bad decision making down the stretch that passed to uh you know because even like i said jeff van gundy mentioned that in the game he made a uh, uh it was a behind the back pass to anthony davis down the stretch to where you post to go bonds like 250 pounds per muscle put your head down put your elbow you know your your, your shoulder down and go towards the basket get to the free throw line because just because you're this size, you know, LeBron's 6'8", 250, you're this big, but you're not playing like it. But Kobe Bryant, in this regard, would 
It's, it's, it's a total difference with him and Jordan. Jordan would say, Jordan and Kobe would say, give me the fucking ball, get the out of my way, and I'm going to carry us home. That's what he would say. And you cannot say, oh, in one hand, oh, LeBron James is the GOAT, he's the greatest, blah, blah, blah. But then when you mention how Kobe would do this and do that, you can't say you can't compare the two. When you're trying to, that's essentially what you're doing when you say he's the greatest ever, you're putting him above all the other greats, which is comparing. The Minnesota Timberwolves didn't make a trade. So why is it that everybody's like, the Lakers need to make a trade? The Lakers need to make a trade. Maybe they maybe the Lakers just need to figure it out. LeBron James, you have talent on this team. Now, what is the problem and why it's not working? Well, I'll tell you why it's not working. It's not working because maybe the way you're going about getting your points is not helping the team win. Maybe you have to pick, maybe you have to pick your spots. Who is right now the duo? Is the duo Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook? Or is it LeBron James and Anthony Davis? Take your pick because it can't be all three. Take your pick. Let me know. It can't be all three. It's not working. It's not a great fit because you have two LeBron James on the court at once. So you have to pick LeBron James. They play, like I said, they play a lot more competitive last night. Um, like I said, Austin Reeves is a bright spot. You have to use him. I would keep him around. Malik Monk, I would keep him. Taylor Horde Tucker, I would keep him. Build, use them to, to build towards the future of what I, I want in the future. But some things have to change. They should have made, they should have traded LeBron James, as I said, at the, the trade deadline. But this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And as I said, LeBron James has to continue to play in the post. He could try to go out there and pad his stats or go out there and, and have all these numbers, but it's not working. It's not getting us wins. Maybe LeBron James has to take a step back, has to dial it back and say, you know what? I can't score 22, 20 you know, 25 points and chase these high level, these high numbers because it's not getting us wins. That's what a leader would do. Anthony Davis, you can't just be a spot up shooter. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, you know, I'm going to get you going in the first quarter for the second quarter. And then I'm going to take over the second half. Same thing with Russell Westbrook. But this is unacceptable. The Lakers look like trash. They don't play as a team. They don't know their roles. They don't communicate. Um, you know, and they just don't have no chemistry. It's just all over the place. It's dysfunction everywhere. And LeBron James is at the root of the problem, in my honest opinion. And that's what I'm going to continue to say. Last night versus the Warriors, Klay Thompson's job is a lot more easier. He just could come back to doing what he do, and he don't have to play as many minutes because Steve Kerr has players that have strength and numbers that where he could just insert his role players. They could come in and they could come in and do their jobs. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson could be on the bench in the fourth quarter and a lot of these games. And then when it's the big games. You know, when it's primetime television, they could be in the game and Klay Thompson could come in and do what he does like he did last night and take it home. But the game shouldn't, shouldn't have even been nearly as close as it was. It shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been. The Warriors could have took care of business a lot earlier. Steph Curry... Took, he wanted to be a, a hero down the stretch and, and took a bad shot. Jordan Poole took a bad shot. When Klay Thompson was hot, 
If he has the high hand, feed him the ball. That's simple. For the Lakers, Austin Reeves, Malik Monk, these guys were hot during the stretch. Feed them the ball. Defense wins championships. The Lakers don't, they don't rotate properly. No rebounding, free throws. Like, it's just, a. it's just, and these are good, we have good role players. It's just, the Lakers could win. It's just, you have to, it's just, everybody has to be on the same page in order for the Lakers to win. But anyway, um, it was great. It was a good game last night. However, the Lakers are trash. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all get in that comment box. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out.